Performance Productions grew out of me writing a play called The Shot of the Boy in 95. Ported down, particularly Drum Cree, was going haywire. In consequence of that, lots of parts of Northern Ireland were also going haywire. There seemed to be only way to engage around that was mayhem. And I thought there must be another way <laughs> to engage about this, so I wrote a play. I was hustling, uh, writing, uh, group work, that kind of thing. So I thought, yeah, there's a job in this. Pat and I, similar chat, and uh, we thought, right, we'll uh, roll our sleeves up and see uh, how this and the company started to emerge. But do they know what it's like to be out in the 11th night and they feel that this is the big one? That all you ever wanted was to keep this night going? This night and every night stretching on into the future? With everything staying the same and everybody knowing where they stood and everything worked out? No, we can't go back to that again. Things will have to change. This is about theatre for social change and asking difficult questions, exploring contentious issues. It was challenging. Um, and I felt at that time it was risk taking at its best. One of the things used to happen is, oh, there's an arts crowd, go out and get the wins. And we used to say, <laughs> we don't do wins. We don't do wins. No wins. Adults. I used to wins. The wins of the future, absolutely. Problems in the present. I went on holiday and I brought an apple, a bomb, a car, a detonator, the list gets longer, and an elephant. Why did you bring an elephant? Why did you bring a bomb? It's not a game. It's not a game. I'll never forget Stephen Rastovich's mother and father. Stephen Rastovich was the last British soldier shot dead in Northern Ireland. And his mother and father were there. It was very emotional for them and because I could see them, I was connecting with them as well. If I open my innards to this truth recovery and let the world listen to the thrum of blood in my heart, the gush of bile in my spleen, the saucerations of air in my lungs, the drip, drip, drip of urine in my kidneys, the clatter of corpuscles and platelets in my arteries. When I sound them all from deep inside where the dead reside, will I be healed? It deals with truth recovery uh, in an incredible, complex and sensitive way. Darren Greer, the actor, um, put on a very um, physical performance of um, the tormented spirit of the trauma, the conflict that he was impersonating. Boys were getting shot. They needed help. Everyone was flat in their faces. I was standing in my white coat with my little bag of bandages and creams and my hair tied back in a ponytail to keep it out of my face because I knew I'd need to show my face that day. Soldiers threatened you? I threatened them. Suddenly that story became more real, alive. Um, I think because the evidentiary thing was maybe taken out of it. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was a real pleasure to see the process and to see how that helped a lot of people to understand what was going on there. The main design brief was always that the set had to be not more than a few hundred pounds and it had to fit into the boot of a hatchback. I'm going to second there now. No, a few hundred pounds. When you work for sole purpose, you get treated professionally. Uh, you learn new skills and you get paid for your work as well too, which is absolutely great. Then one day up on this hill, long after I've exhausted every well of fossil fuels, coal and gas and oil, no longer buried deep in the ground, from all the carbon-based life that died and left its energy behind, the trees and fish and shells, I helped to burn them all up in one brief, brilliant flare. I saw Jim from down the road. Jim, who lives at number 13 with his wife, they have a small child. Just chat like, how are you? Fine, how are you? What is this? Ow! You're hurting my arm. Not often. He looked at me with a strangeness I hadn't seen before. He let go of my arm and he pushed me against the sink. Then he left the room and I was performing the play and I was thinking to myself they won't be enjoying this, they'll want to see a comedy or a musical because they want to see a play about domestic violence for And then after the performance this woman came up to me and she was in her 70s, must have been in her 70s and she had a really, um, she shook my hand rigorously, she had a very strong country woman's handshake and, uh, and she said that was my life. 
actually disrupts things that we think we already know about um, women and men and about their relationships and about power and about who wields it. Um, and by doing this, she enables the audience to ask new questions and to imagine a different way of being. In May 2016, Syrian refugees arrived in Derry. We developed the Sharak Project, which was an Arabic language and culture project. We worked with some local people that were interested in learning some Arabic and interested in learning about Arabic culture. And um, some of the Syrian refugees that were here taught local people some of their language. So there were Arabic lessons, there was um, a session on um, Arabic history, Arabic literature, Arabic films, Arabic music, Arabic dancing. So every week there was a different thing that we did. And it, it finished up in the Arabic cafe. When we speak about new communities and ethnic minorities and new cultures coming into an existing community, the responsibility is on both to learn about their different cultures to share their stories in a safe space such as theatre. That is very beneficial for people who have come from trauma because it helps them to shed that weight. The police was that boy. How did you know about that? Artie told me you investigated his part in Mickey's murder. Part investigated. I couldn't continue with the case. It was a senseless act of violence. The guy was just pulp when he reached the hospital. The case was dropped a week after. Off the record, one of my colleagues said he deserved it. Couldn't be part of a system like that, I couldn't go. They've been out in strike for nearly a year. I don't know how they managed. There's a lot of pressure in these communities. Money's running out. It's the least we can do, Gene. It's just, you know, I want to get good grades. And there's Candida, she's been going on all day about the strike. Fuck her. There you go again! She's coming between us, Jane. I know she thinks I'm not good enough for you. Look, I don't care what she thinks. What gets me is you're always trying to save everyone else. What about us? What about what we want? We have a life too, Sean. Then she quietly shook her head. Looked at me in that disapproving look in her eyes and she said, Michael. What if your son Mikey was transgender? What would you do then? Rant and rave like you have done here? Or disown the child like that fool Richard has with Alice? What would you do then, Michael? Answer me that. I didn't have an answer, Alice. People don't have to see the pieces in order to feed their effect because people leave the spaces and it creates these amazing discussions with young people, with older people, it's completely intergenerational. The play gently reminded us as parents, as educators, that we need to engage with our young people honestly. If we want to be role models for young people then we must look to ourselves, our behaviours and our actions as opposed to hiding behind a version of ourselves that conveniently fits the expression, do as I say, not as I do. Did you know it's a chemical and the alcohol that causes that? It's a depressant. It actually makes people depressed. It affects the emotion. Okay, Stella, I don't need a lecture now. See, it's called ethanol. I was just learning about it the other day in youth work training. Yeah, yeah. You know that paranoid, nobody likes me feeling? That's the ethanol working on your nervous system. It sounds like it's working on your system. Shut up. Play the game. Students who sometimes struggle to engage with textbooks about suicide. They were talking for weeks about what they had must witnessed and the emotional impact of what they'd witnessed.